What's up, everybody? Today we're talking Illustrator, pen tool, rotate tool, artboards, and much more. It's sunny outside, so let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna make some logos in Illustrator today. So we're gonna start by using the preset of the letter. So we're gonna click on Create New and use the letter preset. Now I have that in my recent items, but in case you don't, we're gonna go up to the print tab up at the top here and click on letter. And then we're gonna keep all of our um, preset details the same. Notice that it is CMYK color, that is for printing. So CMYK is the color mode that you definitely wanna stick with for printing. And so because it's a logo, it's probably gonna be printed on all different types of things. We're gonna keep it in CMYK and click create. Our artboard shows up in the middle of our page. One of the best things about Illustrator is artboards and the ability to create multiple artboards in one file. Um, and we're actually going to do that today. So we're going to have all of our logos kind of show up here in different artboards, but we're gonna just start with this first artboard to start with. Um, this is the artboard tool, just so you guys know. We do have, it says artboard one here. We can rename that artboard if we want. You also have some properties of your artboard over here. It tells you um, the width and the height and the, the preset that we use that we're in the vertical mode instead of the landscape mode. You can see if I click on that, um, we got lots of different options there. I'm gonna go out of the artboard tool, tool and go back to our um, selection tool. All right, first thing we're gonna do is head over to our layers. Layers panel looks a little bit different than Photoshop if you're used to, used to Photoshop and it works a little bit differently than it does in Photoshop. So just kind of pay attention. We're gonna put each of our different logos on a different layer. So I'm gonna start with this first layer being our logo one layer. So I just double clicked on that, typed in the words and pressed enter to rename that logo layer. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is we're going to make this logo for, um, it's a company that has hired us and their name is Sunshine Flowers. And so we're gonna make a logo that has like a little sunshine flower popping out of a flower pot. So to make our flower pot, we're gonna use the rectangle tool. Right now you don't need to worry so much about the fill color and the stroke color, but um, later on we're gonna change that. So with the rectangle tool, somewhere in the middle of our canvas, I'm just gonna draw a box like that and then I'm gonna draw another box underneath it that's more of a square shape. So we got like a long rectangle and then more of a square rectangle underneath it. It doesn't matter how big they are as long as it's kind of that same proportion right there. Then I'm gonna use my selection tool to click and drag my box to be right underneath the longer rectangle. Um, what basically what I want to happen is I want it to be lined up in the middle of it. You can see that I have some snaps on so it's snapping to the center of that and now I know that it's intersecting, they're touching because it says the word intersect in pink. Um, but there's some other ways to do that to make sure that it's right where you want it. So um, when I have this box selected right here, expand out my layers so you can see my two rectangles. The rectangle that I have selected right now is highlighted in this blue color. And you'll notice that in my logo one layer, that rectangle has these concentric circles. That means that that is the layer that I have selected. If I click on this one, you'll see the concentric circle meets, goes over to this rectangle. So that's how you can kind of tell what layer is selected on your artboard. All right, so with that one selected, I'm actually gonna hold down the shift key and select the other one as well. So you can see that both of them have the concentric circles over here. And I'm gonna use the align box on my properties panel over here to click on this horizontal align center. So that means that the horizontal center of each one of these boxes, we're gonna line them up so they're on top of each other. And I think that mine were already done, it's already done. So I'm gonna intentionally move it over here so you guys can see the difference. So with both of them selected, and you can see that I selected it, you can hold down shift to select each one of them, or you can simply draw a box around both of them with that selection tool, and it selects both of them that way as well. But with both of them selected, I'm gonna click on that horizontal align center and it snaps them into place. One thing I wanna show you real quick with that, because this is a very powerful tool, this alignment panel over here. Um, if I have one over here and one over here, and let's say I want to align them just like we talked about, having the centers be aligned horizontally. I want this box 
to snap over to where this one is. I don't want this one to come over here. I don't want them to meet in the middle. I want the bottom box to come to the center of this box. So with both of them selected, after both of them are selected, then you can once again, so both of them are selected, click one more time on the one that you want it to align to. So I want this box to align to that box. Notice that when I clicked on it again, so it was already selected with this box and I clicked on it again, just a regular left click, it created this extra blue box. And what that means is that this is the like the anchor. So this one is going to align to that anchored object. So when I click on that same horizontal align center button, it moves it over instead of moving this one over to that one. It's a really powerful tool, especially when you get into more complex designs. Okay, so now with both of them selected, I'm gonna just click and drag this one up. So to make sure that it doesn't go left and right, I'm gonna hold down the, the shift key and that will kind of force my object to go straight up and down. All right, so we're getting closer to our flower pot shape that we want here. I'm going to use the white arrow or the direct selection tool to select just this corner. So the white arrow tool is very powerful to select specific anchor points of a shape and edit them. But first you have to click on the one, the full shape, make sure it is selected, then click once on the actual anchor point that you want to change. And notice that it's a filled in blue, blue square instead of an open blue square now. So that one anchor point is selected and now I can click and drag it to move it in. And mine's, once again, I have snaps on, so it's kind of like snapping so that it stays horizontal. But if you hold down the shift key, it will make sure that you don't go accidentally up and down and kind of ruin that shape of the flower pot. So I move that one in just a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing on this anchor point. Click once to select the anchor point with that direct selection tool and then click and drag and you can move it in. So now we've got, and I didn't want to move mine over a little bit like that. So now we've got this beautiful flower pot type shape. All right, so now I'm going to use what's called the shape builder tool to combine those two shapes. This right here is the shape builder tool. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth tool down on the left hand side of our toolbox. And the way the shape builder tool works is whatever objects are selected. So I need to get my selection tool to select both of these objects. Whatever objects are selected, when you click on the Shape Builder tool, you can click and drag a line to draw a line over the two shapes to combine them. So right now this is one shape, that's another shape. If I click and drag a line over the two shapes, it combines them together. So now instead of having a small rectangle and a bigger rectangle that we kind of turned into a trapezoid, we now have one flower pot shape right there. All right, great. And you'll notice that over here, once again, it was two shapes. Now it's one shape. It's one path that kind of makes that shape. All right, so we have our flower pot shape. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the pen tool to draw the stem of a flower. All right, and we're using this pen tool. It's the third one down. Pen tool is super powerful in Illustrator. Um, notice that I still have this shape selected. Just to make it a little bit easier so that I don't accidentally drawing onto this, I'm going to use my direct section tool, click somewhere over there. So it is not selected. Get my pen tool again, and now we can draw our stem. I'm gonna start up at the top here. So I'm gonna click once, let go. And then the second click, I'm going to click and drag to make this kind of like curve in my stem. And then my last click, I'm gonna go all the way in here to the My Flower Pot and do a little bit of another click and drag for another curve. That's all I want for my stem, just that line right there. And so the, the pen tool wants to keep going in order to stop it so that it doesn't keep making more points, just press escape on your keyboard and then you have your one um, shape right there. It's not a closed in shape, it's just the path. Uh, selection tool to select it. And now we want to remove the fill because you can see that I have the fill is white and the stroke is black. Because it's not a shape, I don't want it to be filled in with any anything. So you could either over here while the fill is on top, click on the none, or you could have done it over here while it's selected in the properties panel, click on the fill, and then this red cross the swatch means that there is no fill. I do wanna change the stroke a little bit though. I'm gonna take this stroke and I'm gonna change the how thick it is all the way up to 20. So you can click, keep clicking or you can type in 20, either way works just fine. And I got up to 20 here. 
We're going to use um, a tool that's called the width tool to make a little taper here at the top and the bottom. So I want the top to be tapered into like a point and then the bottom to kind of taper out and make it wider. So the width tool, if you look over here in your um, toolbox, it's a tool down called the width tool. If you click on that one, um, basically all you're going to do is going to click and drag. That makes it wider up at that point or click and drag in. So I want that one to be skinny and then I want this one to be a little bit wider. So I'm just going to click and drag that out. So just change the width of our path there. Very cool tool right there, the width tool. All right, with my black arrow, I'm going to once again select that stem and just kind of click and drag it so it looks like it's somewhere in the center there. You could use the align tool again to make sure that's perfectly in the center, but because it's like a curve, it may not look right. So you can play around the side if you want it to be a little bit more to the left or right and so forth and so on. All right, I don't want to be able to see this stem. I want the flower pot to be on top of the stem. So to deal with the, the arrangement and the order of how the items are stacked, I'm just going to take that flower pot path and click and drag it up above the stem path. So now it's behind my flower pot. This again is a layer right here. My logo one is a layer and these paths are sub layers that are inside of that layer. So once again, it works very differently than Photoshop layers. If that's what you're used to, just kind of keeping you aware of how these layers are working over here. Okay, so next is going to be the sunshine flower that we're going to put up here at the top. So the first thing we want to do is to get our shape tool to make a circle. Um, this shape tool has an ellipse tool, which makes both ovals, ellipses, circles, but we want to make a circle. So what we're going to do is up here above our stem, enough room that we can make a circle. I'm going to click and drag out. I wanted the center of the circle to be where I clicked initially. So in order to tell the tool that the my first click should be the center, you hold down the option key or the alt key if you're on a PC. And the other thing that I need to tell it is that I want it to be a perfect circle. I don't want it to be um, an oval. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm holding down two keys right now while I'm drawing this. The option key and the shift key. Or if you're on a PC, the alt key and the shift key. The option key or alt key makes the first click the center of your circle. And the shift key makes it a perfect circle so it's not an ellipse or an oval. Okay, so I'm going to draw, pull it out about to right about there and then let go. And now I have the first part of my sunflower or my sunshine flower. Okay, so we've got our circle. I'm going to use, I could use the polygon tool to draw a triangle to start here, but I think it's just going to be simpler if we use the pen tool. So I'm going to draw a little long triangle that goes kind of what's going to be around this, um, the center part of the flower up here. So all I did is I clicked once, twice, th and three times, and then a fourth time to connect my shape. Make sure that you connect your shape. The first click and the last click are exactly the same. And you can notice that I have that path over here that showed up. So we have our stem, we have our flower pot, we have the circle, which is the center of the flower. And then this is gonna be like one of the petals or the sunshine rays of our flower. All right, so with that um, selected, I want to make sure that the whole thing is selected. So I'm using this black arrow tool to select it. What I want to do is I want to make a whole bunch of them that go around the outside of the circle. And I want to do seven. I feel like seven's a lucky number, and I think it will just look make this look really good. So with it selected, we're going to use the rotate tool. When you click on the rotate tool while an object is selected, it will automatically put this like very light blue crosshair in the center of the object. And what that crosshair means is that's the center of rotation. So if I was to rotate this triangle right now, it would rotate around that center. I want to rotate this triangle around the center of this circle. So to change where that goes, I'm going to hold down the option key on my keyboard, make sure that my mouse says center when I hover over the center of the circle. And while I'm holding the mouse, the option key down, I'm going to click and it's going to move that little blue box or that little blue crosshair into the center of that circle. Then this pop-up menu comes up and it's asking us, what angle do you want to rotate this around? 
we want to rotate it around so that there's seven of them around a whole circle. So if you go back to your geometry class, you remember that a circle has 360 degrees for the whole circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in 360 divided by 7 and let Photoshop do the math for us so that we don't have to do that. When you click on preview, um, what it's going to do, so I'm going to uncheck it, it's going to show you where it's going to rotate it to. Now, I want to keep the original one that I had there and the one that I'm rotating. I want to keep both of them because I'm going to have seven of them going all the way around. So instead of clicking OK of just rotating it, I'm going to copy the original. So the original does, stays there and then the rotated one copies over there. So I'm going to go click on copy and you can see that I have the original and the new one there. Now, before I do anything else, don't click anywhere, don't do anything else, because next step, you're going to basically duplicate that transformation over and over again. And if you click somewhere else, it might mess up your transformation. So you can either go up to the top here under Object, Transform, Transform again, or you can see that there's a keyboard shortcut, and that's what I'm going to use is the Command-D or Control-D if you're on a PC. So I'm going to click on it once right here see the transform again so I did it one more time and now I'm going to do command D for the rest of them so um, I've done three so far four five six seven so I have all seven of my beautiful sunshine rays coming out of my flower there okay so um, now I have this problem here where my triangle is overlapping my stem so what I want to do is I'm going to take that triangle and actually all the triangles and the circle and rotate them together so the way that I do that is I have this triangle selected. I'm going to hold down the shift key to select all the rest of the triangles. So that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. I got everything together. And I'm going to go ahead and group those together into one group so that when I rotate it, everything stays together. You can either group it by doing Command G on your keyboard, or you can go up to the top and go to Object Group. Either one works. If you're on a PC, you might have to do Control G and then we've got them all together. So now you can see that we've actually made another like sub layer situation going on here in our layers panel. So we have logo one, inside of logo one we have this group and inside the group is all the paths, all of the little triangles and the circle. And then we have underneath that, we have our flower pot and our stem. So a lot of things going on here, but what the group selected and you can see that it's selected because the concentric circles are right there and also because of this blue box that goes around it. I'm going to hover my mouse around the outside of that transformation box and just click and drag to rotate it around so that now I have a little space in between my stem and those um, petals or sunshine rays, whatever you want to call them there. All right, so we're getting close to the end of this logo. We're going to add our text in here. So um, with the text type tool, you're going to click and drag a box. And this is the box in which you're going to type in. When you click and drag a box, it automatically, Illustrator, puts some filler text in there. And that's the lorem ipsum text that shows up right here. I'm just going to go and press the backspace or delete on my keyboard to get rid of that text. And we're going to type in all caps, sunshine on the first line, press enter, and on the second line, flowers. Then highlight all the text. You can either do command A or you can click and drag to highlight. Either way works just fine. So I did Command A, Control A if you're on a PC, to select all of the, the letters. And then in my character panel over here under my properties tab, um, I have the option to change my font family, the size, and some other things that we're going to play around with here. So first, we're going to change our font family and we're going to change it to Arial. So go ahead and scroll down to find the font Arial. And we're going to change the size to 36. So you can either click on this drop down menu here and go to 36, or you could type it in. Either way works just fine. So I have it up to 36. The top, I want it to be bold. So I'm going to highlight just the sunshine, and I double click to highlight that, or you could click and drag. So sunshine, I'm going to change it to a bold style, which is right underneath the aerial. And I'm going to keep the bottom in the regular. All right, so now that I have sunshine flowers, I'm going to um, play around here with the, the tracking and the letting. So tracking is the space between letters. So this flowers over here, I want it to be so that flowers takes up the same amount of horizontal space as sunshine. And before I do that, I'm going to highlight all this and make it center aligned so that 
I can see a little bit better how much space I need to make it on this side and this side. So I'm going to take that flower, so I'm highlighting that, and I'm changing right here, this is the tracking, and I'm going to just go up a few points until you see, you can see my letters are kind of getting farther apart from each other, until we can see that the F and the S of flowers matches up with the S and the E of sunshine. So I'm just going to keep going out until right about there. And it looks pretty good, like that lines up pretty good, that lines up pretty good, I feel good about that. And then I want to mess with the with the letting. So this is the letting right here, and that's the space between the lines. So I'm going to take it down just a little bit so that they're closer together, something like that. So that's where I want my, my words to be. When you've got the words where you want them, you're going to use that move tool and just kind of um, drag them around to get them where you want in the logo. Now that I have my logo, I'm going to actually select the whole thing here and I'm going to move it so that it's in the center of my page. It doesn't have to be perfect, but a little bit more centered than it was before. And I'm going to take this whole logo and the artboard and I'm going to make a duplicate of it. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want one version that is all in one color and one version that is all in, um, that is a two color version. So before I um, make the one color version, I'm going to color this one in my colors and then once I make a duplicate of it, then I'll make everything back to one color. So the flower pot here and the sun shine flower are going to be one color and then the words and the stem are going to be another color. So I'm going to select this right here, so the sunshine, and you see that it has that black outline. So basically I'm going to use this select same and I'm going to use um, stroke color because I know that both this and the flower pot have a black outline. So select same stroke color and what I did is it selected everything with the same stroke color. I don't want this path though. That path right there is the stem and it selected that because it is also black. So I'm going to hold down the, the shift key on my keyboard and click on that path to unselect it. And you can see it looks like it's unselected and it's also not selected over here. So right now I only have the sunshine flower and the flower pot selected and I'm going to change the color of them. So first I'm going to change the fill color. Um, I don't really care for any of the colors in here, so I'm going to go down here to our, if you hover your mouse over it, the Swatch Library menu. And I'm going to go, where else, but to the Nature and Flowers swatches. So once again, I went to the Swatch Libraries menu, Nature, and then Flowers. And it's going to pop up this lovely little panel of flower colors. I'm going to actually dock that right there. I'll put my layers panel in so we can see a little better. Now that I've docked it right there, I can see all these beautiful flower colors and that's what I'm going to use to color in this. So whatever color or whatever is on top here, either the fill or the stroke is the one that we're going to be editing and I want to edit the fill first. So with the fill on top, I'm going to click on flowers and I'm going to choose this yellow color from the sun or the sunflower folder in our flowers. So flowers panel, sunflower, and then that one right there and make it that pretty uh, bright yellow. Then I can go to my stroke and I'm going to turn off the stroke so that it does not have the black stroke. So we're halfway there. Then I'm going to pick on that stroke for the stem and we're going to use the green from the hydrangea folder which I believe is that last one right there. Yep, you have your mouse over it, so it's hydrangea. So we're gonna use this green right here. Oh, that's the fill. That's what we don't wanna do. So we wanna, um, I'm gonna do edit undo there. And I'm gonna switch it so that the stroke is on top, sorry. So the stroke is on top. So I just clicked on it and then now I can choose that green. Now, when I did that, it messed up my, my stroke properties over here. So I'm just gonna go Command Z a couple times to get it back to where it was. Make sure that stroke is on top and then click on my green so that I get it the right color. So we got our, our green for the stem and we got the yellow for the flower pot and the flower. And now we're going to go over to the, the text. So I want the, the fill color for the sunshine flowers to be that green color. There we go. 
If you don't like these colors, feel free to make it a different color, but then we have our, our basic idea of our first logo. All right, like I said, we're gonna have a two color version and an all black and white version. So one color version. So I'm gonna take my artboard here, and this is my first artboard. And while I'm holding down the Option key, or Alt key if you're on a PC, I'm gonna click and drag to copy that whole artboard over so that we have another one over here. Let me use the pan, the hand tool to pan over a little bit so we can see both of them at the same time. All right, so all I did was with the artboard tool, I clicked and dragged while holding down the Option key or Alt key if you're on a PC. Now, I like to label my artboards. I just think it's good practice. So I'm gonna click on this first artboard and up here at the top, I'm gonna label this logo one. And then I'm gonna go over to my artboard two. I'm gonna label this logo two. And I'm actually gonna have my layers kind of match that same style of labeling. All right, so when I go over here to my second artboard and select everything that's on this artboard and open up my layers menu, you'll notice that these are the ones, those four right there that have concentric circles, those are the ones that are selected. They're selected right here, but they're not selected in the layers panel. So I clicked on the top one, hold down shift and select all four of those now I can collect in a new layer. So the, just those four things are in this layer two. Now technically, layer two right now is a sub layer of logo one. I want it to be its own layer, so I'm just gonna click and drag it up above logo, logo one, and we'll name this layer logo two. Logo two. So in that first one, we've got everything that's on that first artboard. And now, and sorry, I just locked it so that we won't accidentally mess that one up. And then on the second layer is everything that's on this second artboard. And I'm not locking this one yet because I wanna actually mess around with the colors here. All right, so like I said, this is all gonna be one color. So we're gonna take everything here and go ahead and switch it so it's all black. So I have this one selected, go up to select same fill color. So it also selects the pot and we're going to change the fill to a solid black. Same thing for this and this. All right, so for the stroke, we're going to change that to a solid black, and for our text, we're going to change that to a solid black. And now we've got everything together. All right, this is our first logo. Before I go on, I'm gonna go ahead and save this so I don't lose my work. So file, save as. I'm gonna save it on my computer, and we're gonna name this last name, first initial, underscore logo and press save. And that's just so that I don't lose my work. We will export these as PNGs when we're all the way done. Okay, we wanna give Sunshine Flowers another option for logo. Um, this logo is going to look a little bit different. So we're gonna go and create a new artboard down here. So I'm gonna get my artboard tool and just click and drag on artboard, but I want it to be the same size. So after I click and dragged it, I have it selected here and over on my properties panel, I wanna change the preset to be that letter size, the same as the other ones. You'll notice that when I did that, it made it, um, hors or it, made it a portrait size, but sometimes it might make it a um, landscape. You have the option to change it right there and move it wherever you want it. I'm gonna go ahead and label this artboard while I have it selected as logo three and press enter. Okay, zooming in on this artboard down here, we're going to create a new logo with the star tool to start with. So I'm going um, down here on my toolbar to the fifth tool down. This is the star tool. All right, in the star tool, um, you're just gonna click somewhere in the, in the center of your artboard and this box will pop up. And we have some very specific things that we're gonna make sure that we have um, correct in here. All right, so right now mine says points. So the radius is 25 points, 50 points, and five point star. I want it to be a seven point star because I want it to have seven like pet petals for like that sunflower type thing like we did on the last one. But I want my radius to be in inches. So my radius for the inner radius, which is um, where the star goes into, I want it to be 0.3 inches. So I'm just gonna type in 0.3 space IN, and then it automatically converted it to points for me, and that's fine. A radius for the outside of the star, so where the points go on the outside, is gonna be 1.5 inches. Once again, I just type in 1.5 and then inch, and then it will convert it to points. And then make it a seven point star and click OK. And that's exactly where we want it right there. Then we're gonna get the ellipse tool. 
which is the third one down in that shapes tool. If you click and hold it, that's the right, right there. And we're going to create a circle that matches with the center of the star. So once again, if you see you hover your mouse over the center of the star, you should see a pink word that says center. That's where we want the center. Whenever you're drawing an ellipse or a circle and you want the center to start with your first click, you have to hold down the option key. So I'm holding down the option key. And I also need to hold down the shift key so that it doesn't get stretched out too wide or too skinny or everything like that. So keep in my proportion to make it a perfect circle holding down the shift key. And I'm going to get it out about like that. Okay. Um, I want there to be some separation between the star back here and this center circle. So to create that separation, the look of the separation, I'm going to add a white stroke to my circle. So with the circle selected, I went over here to the appearance and changed my stroke to white. And then I'm going to change the stroke up to, let's see, eight points I think will be good. Something like that. So it creates that space between them. So now we have like this sunshine flower looking um, icon. Um, we're going to add a little petal in the shape of a teardrop in between here. And then we're going to add um, duplicate it so it goes all the way around. So with the pen tool, we're going to actually do this with only three clicks. So the first click is going to be right about here in between these two um, star points. So click right there. The second click is, so I clicked and let go. The second click, I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to drag my line a little bit like that so it makes one side of the teardrop let go. And then my last point is going to be exactly where I started it. Just click and let go. And so now we have like this little teardrop shape. With my selection tool selected, I don't want a stroke on that one. So I'm going to click on stroke over here and get rid of my stroke. And now we have that teardrop shape and we're going to copy it all the way around. Similar to the process that we just did above with the um, triangles, I'm going to rotate it and copy it all the way around. So I have it selected first. Use that rotate tool, make the center of that rotation the center of the circle by holding down the Alt key and clicking once in the center of the circle. It already knows the right angle based off of the last one, but in case you forgot, that's 360 degree degrees divided by seven. And then we're gonna keep press copy and then to duplicate that over and over again, we're going to, do, going to do Command D on our keyboard or Control D if you're on a PC. So once, twice, three times, four times, five times. So we have all seven of those. And now we're going to get our text and do exactly what we did before um, with Sunshine Flowers. So you could type it out again or I'm going to zoom out with Command minus a couple times and just grab my text that was up here, hold down the Alt key, you can see that's changed my cursor to duplicate it over here. Now what gets tricky with this is that if you look in our layers panel, um, you remember we we're trying to make our layers match up with what's on the actual artboard. So all of these things should be on the logo two artboard, but we want all of these things to be on a layer logo three artboard. So if you look at all the things that are selected, I'm going to actually select them in my layers panel. So holding down the shift key to select the first and the last one. And then we're going to go to the hamburger menu at the top right, collect in a new layer, take that layer three up above layer two, logo two. And we'll label this one logo three. All right, so I'm gonna lock logo two since we're done with that one. All right, going back down to our logo three layer, and I'm actually, I'm just going to select something over here and go to view, fit artboard in window. And so it's just getting that one artboard that I was working on and it fits it to my window here. I'm going to take all of these items. I'm going to stretch out my layers menu so I can see what's selected. All of these items and group them together. So that's command G on my keyboard or object group. So that's all together. And then my sunshine flowers is down here. And I'm going to take both of these items and use that horizontal align center to make sure that they're lined up. And then I want to move this one up just a little bit. I'm pulling down the shift key to make sure it doesn't go left and right and just moving it up straight like that. All right. I'm going to do it one more time, make sure that they're aligned. There we go. 
All right, so this is our second logo, and it's already an all black version, so I think I'm gonna leave it like that, and then we'll make a copy of this artboard to make the colored version of it. So zooming out a little bit so we can see my artboards, I'm going to use that artboard tool, hold down the option key, and click and drag to make a copy of the artboard. I'm gonna name this artboard logo four. And just like we did before, I'm going to select all the items in here. So you can see these two things are selected. Select them in my Layers panel, Hamburger menu, Collect in New Layer. Take that layer up to the top, and that one is Logo 4. Press Enter to confirm the new name. I'll lock my Logo 3 layer so I don't accidentally mess it up. See, I can't click on here. I can't do anything with it. Same with these other locked layers. But I can mess around with this one. Command-C to undo that. Okay, so zooming in on our last logo over here, we want to change the colors of this one. Um, I have this all grouped, but I want the pieces to be different colors. So to get into the group to edit the individual pieces, you can double click on the group and you can see that I've entered the group up here. You can also see in my layers panel, it says isolation mode now. And so I can see the individual pieces of the group. It will let me actually individually select them now. I want to get my petals and the center. So I'm gonna hold down shift on my keyboard to select each one of these items. So the petals and the center. And I'm going to go to that, make sure that I have my fill color out front. I'm gonna to go to that, that flower panel that we had open up earlier. And we're going to choose this orange color right here. Or sorry, I, I lied. We're going to do the, the yellow color again from the sunflower. And then we're going to use the orange color on the star here. So you could choose, I think this one looks really good, actually the poppy, the third color under the poppy folder. And then we're going to go out of our group. So I'm in group right now. Just double click anywhere outside of the group. And now I'm outside of the group. Just click on my sunshine flowers and we're going to get that one to be that same orange. So it looks like that. And zooming out a little bit so you can see, we got all of our logos done. They look great. Um, one more thing that I want to do real quick. I want to organize our artboards. So if we go back to our layers panel, I'll go ahead and lock that logo too. Actually, I'm going to unlock all these because I'm about to move my artboards and I don't want it to accidentally not move the artwork with the artboard. So I'm unlocking all of them while I move these artboards. Go to my artboard uh, tab. And then the hamburger menu here, we're going to do some rearrange all artboards. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in a row going horizontally. So if you highlight over the third little icon here, it says arrange by row. It's gonna have 20 points uh, spacing in between it. That should be, actually I'm gonna change it to a one inch. So I'm just having one inch. And then I do want it to move the artwork with the artboard and click okay. And now you can see that it's made one row here. You can see all of them in a row and they're perfectly aligned with one inch of space in between each one of them. Go back over to my layers panel. I'm gonna lock all these again since I'm done. And we can go ahead and save this. So file save, we already named it. So just do save this time. And let's do an export. So we're gonna do export as PNG. We're gonna use all artboards. So it's gonna give us one PNG for each one of them all our boards and then click export and then you can decide if you want it to have a transparent background or if you want it to have a white background for this project let's go with white and then you can click ok and when you look into your finder or your windows explorer depending on if you're on mac or pc you should be able to see all of the different logos that you created as individual png files if you liked this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and drop a line in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for alerts of when new videos are posted. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy creating.